Hello, hello everyone. My name is Vicki Howell. I am host and producer and creator of The Knit Show with Vicki Howell, which is coming on October 5th to YouTube. It's a great new um, lifestyle series for the knitters and crocheters out there and really just anybody that loves yarn, which is why I'm also here because I'm thrilled to have teamed up with Joanne to just inspire you to craft and create with yarn. So Starting today and a couple times every month, I'm going to be hanging out with you in your living room or at your workspace or wherever you are, either live to answer your questions or you can watch later here on the Joanne Face page, Facebook page or on the Knit Show with Vicki Howell YouTube channel um, and we'll answer your questions. But we are going to be playing with yarn every single episode. So sometimes that'll be knitting, sometimes crochet, sometimes yarn wrapping maybe macrame or finger knitting or just yarn wrapping, just all kinds of fun that'll get you into all of those great Joanne aisles, mixing all kinds of different materials. Which brings me to today's project for Halloween. Any crafters, we love us the Halloween. And at the time of this live broadcast, we are also only one day here in the States until it's officially fall. And fall is also officially full-time crafting season, especially for us professional, professional yarn crafters. This is when it's on, it is on. And Halloween is so fun to craft for, and you can do it in all different kinds of ways. My way just happens to be with yarn. So what we're going to be doing, I'm gonna bring this a little bit closer, is we're gonna be making this web-inspired hanging planter. This is crocheted with a tassel added and it's holding a little magical decoration that you can get in the Joanne aisle. So first off, what do you need for this project? Well, I will tell you. All right, we are going to get one funkin. So these are the faux pumpkins for those of you that are not familiar with them. They're great because they're, you don't have to worry about them rotting. There's not all the mess with a real pumpkin. But for this project, you can act, you know, you can absolutely use for a real pumpkin. It's just they're a little bit heavier, too. So these are great. They're hollow inside. They're made of foam. I chose the medium size, but the pattern that I'm showing you today, which will also be available in written form on the Joanne blog, um, is totally adaptable for really any size of the pumpkins. They come in bigger. You can see the bigger one over my shoulder in my favorite color. Hi, Jennifer, nice to see you. Anybody who's watching, if you're enjoying, uh, if you find that you're enjoying a little yarn crafting or you get something from this video, please make sure to share it. Um, sharing is caring and all that. Okay, so they also come in different colors like the traditional orange, but different sizes too. So you could do wee baby small ones with a little tiny succulent, or you can do the medium size like I did with a little spidery plant, or you can go big and just, you know, fill it with multiple things. So you need to choose one of those. And then you're also going to need some chunky weight yarn. I'm using buttercream. It's their mohair metallic. Um, it's going to look backwards to you because I've got the camera flipped over, but I'll flip it again so that you'll be able to read it properly. Um, I chose this because it's got a little bit of mohair in it, which kind of reminded me of spiderweb. So I thought it'd be perfect for this. Um, then you're going to need a size J crochet hook. Keep in mind though, crocheting and your gauge, which is how many stitches and rows per inch, is much like a handshake. It varies from person to person. If you're a loosey-goosey handshaker, and you might be a loosey-goosey hook holder, you're gonna have a different stitch gauge than if you're the opposite, if you're firm and hard. So you can always feel free to go up or go down in a hook size if you find that your piece isn't the size that you want, okay? Um, and then you're also gonna want a yarn needle, just a large eye tapestry needle. Sometimes they're called two yarn needle. And then a couple other supplies that we'll, we'll talk about later, but those are, those are the goods to really get you started. Okay, so I don't know about you, but I think that we should dive right in because I wanna make sure that you know from start to finish how to make the webbed planter. So this is the part where I flip around the camera um, if you have any questions, please type them right now. I'm not seeing any come up. So if for some reason the app isn't working, I will be on the board. So in the comment section later, and I'll answer them personally after the fact. Okay, I'm going to turn around the camera. Sometimes this is not all that pretty of a uh, transition. Um, so talk amongst yourself. I'd love to know what you're making for Halloween crafts. 
Okay, let's get us set up. Okay, so the first thing that we need is our hook. and our yarn, and you're gonna start with a slip knot. So to make a slip knot, you just make a little cursive E. The strand that's on the top, you whip around, push it through. You'll have a loop, and you can kind of tug on that tail. Okay, from here, we're going to chain four. One, two, three, four. Then what we want to do is we're going to start the bottom portion of this piece is worked in the round. Well, it's all worked in the round, but it's worked. Um, we're going to be, need to create a center ring. So to do that, we're going to slip stitch in the first chain. So that one that we started with down here. So we're going to count. We never count the loop that's on the hook. So we go one, two, three, four. That's this one. Slip stitch. And now we have a loop. Okay, so now we're gonna start working in the round. The first round what we wanna do is we're gonna chain two. We are gonna be working in half double crochets. So the chain two creates the height for that half double crochet, but it will not count as a stitch for this project. So now we wanna work eight half double crochets in the center of the ring. So right smack dab in the middle. To work a half double crochet, you yarn over, insert the hook through that center ring, yarn over again, pull through one loop, yarn over one last time, pull through all three loops. So you're gonna do that seven more times in the center loop. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, whoops, that was seven. Okay, and again, if you're asking questions, I'm not seeing them, something is technically not, not kosher, so please just type them anyways and I will come back and answer them. All right, so now that we're at the end of the round, we need to join it, because right now you can see it's kind of, it's got a flat top, that, that won't work for us. So we're gonna join it at the top of the beginning chain with a slip stitch. Oops, I only got one strand. This yarn is super cool. Um, it's actually made with two strands of yarn. It's got kind of a metallic strand and then that mohair-like strand. So you just need to make sure that you grab them all. Um, and the hook that I'm using, just um, in case you're curious, is by Clover. Okay, from here, this entire, for the entire bottom, you're going to need to increase by eight stitches for every round. So I've written it out for you. Again, that pattern is on the Joanne blog. But for this one, that means that we need to increase on every round or every stitch all the way around because we have eight stitches now. So to do that, we're going to go to the next stitch and we're going to half double crochet once, half double crochet twice in that same stitch. And then we're going to do that in the next stitch. One, two. So we're doubling our stitches. And you're gonna do that all the way around and you will get a piece that looks like this. You can see it's a nice little circle. Now we increase like this with this particular number so that the piece will lay flat and not curl up like a bowl. Okay, so I've joined that second round in the same way. I slip stitch to join the round at the top of the beginning chain. I'm going to make a chain two because we know we always have to do that to create the height for our half double crochet. And for this round, we still only want to increase by eight stitches, but we've got more stitches now, right? We've got double, we've got 16 stitches. So that means we're not going to increase in every stitch. We're going to increase in every other stitch. So that means two, half double crochets in the first one. Then you go to the next one. And if you're not, if you're a little unclear about which stitch is the stitch that you work into and which one you have already worked in, just give a little tug on the last stitches and you can see it's really clear that clear that's moving. So I know I've already worked there. 
So I'm going to move over to this one, yarn over, work one stitch. Okay, and then I go to the next stitch, yarn over, half double crochet twice, half double crochet once, half double crochet twice. So you're just going to go in that pattern all the way around. So every other stitch you're going to work two. You're going to continue in that manner for several rounds, but each, each round you will add an additional plain stitch in between. So what I mean by that, let me pull this one back here. So here we worked two half double crochets and then we worked one and then we started the two again, right? Well, the next row or the next round rather, we'll work two stitches in one stitch and then we'll work one stitch in the next two stitches two stitches again, one stitch in the next two stitch. The next round will have three. And if you wanted to keep going, you could have four, five, six. You could go as, as, as large as you'd like to create a bigger circle. This is also how you'll change the size of your piece. If you're working on a smaller pumpkin, you may stop after you know round three or so. If you're working with a larger um, if you work for a larger pumpkin than I'm using, then just go an additional round, but just make sure that you always add a single stitch, an extra single stitch in between those increases all the way around. Okay, so this is what your bottom will look like. And now we wanna move on to the portion that looks like the web. So we, this is the part that's just gonna be really stable to hold on to your piece. Okay, you'll end up with 40 stitches. Again, this is all in the pattern available on the Joanne blog. And from here, we are going to chain 11. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. Okay, this counts as our, as a uh, triple crochet, which I'll show you how to do in a second, and then the chain seven that's going to go in our, or that's going to be the, create the space that's, that looks like a web. So from here, we want to skip three. So one, two, three, and we want to work in that fourth stitch. Okay, one, two, three, working in the fourth stitch, we're gonna do a triple crochet. To do that, we yarn over once, twice, insert the hook, yarn over, pull through. Now we're gonna yarn over and pull through two loops three times, hence the triple crochet name. One, two, three. And now you can see that you've created the very beginnings of your web. The triple crochet is a much taller stitch, so this part goes super fast. I'm going to show you one more time. So we're going to chain, this time we're going to chain seven, three, four, five, six, seven. We're going to skip three, one, two, three, work in that next stitch for a triple crochet, yarn over once, twice. And then we're going to pull through two stitches, two loops at a time, three times. So one, two, three. And you're gonna continue in that manner all the way around, skipping three, chaining seven in between all of your treble cr or triple crochets. Sometimes they're called treble as well. They're kind of interchangeable. And what you'll get is a piece that looks like this. Okay, let me put in my hook again. Okay, so I am on my very last repeat. Oh, look, it looks like more people are coming in. Again, I'm so sorry that I can't see your questions. Hi, Diane, so nice to see you. Okay, so I'm gonna chain my last seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then I need to join this. Now, the height of a treble crochet is four chains, so I need to count up from the bottom. So one, two, three, four, and join with a slip stitch. 
and that is the first of our webby rounds. So I'm gonna show you the next round and then after that you'll kind of have the established pattern. So what we're doing, since a pumpkin, and this isn't the one that I used right away, but since the pumpkin is not a perfect cylinder, it gets bigger towards the center, you're going to have to create a little more fabric with your yarn towards the center. So to do that, all we're going to do is increase how many chains that we have in the center. But the first thing that we have to do is we have to create our height for the treble. So we're gonna chain those four, two, three, four, that counts as our treble, but now we, we're going to have nine chains as our chain space gap. So that means another nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it's a total of 13. We're gonna skip all of the chains from the round below, and then we're going to triple crochet in that same stitch that was the triple crochet from the round below. And you can see that that stitch, you can see right here, let me pull that up, is right there. Only I should have yarned over first. <laughs> so yarn over once, twice, through three loops. Do that one more time. So chain one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then triple, triple crochet in the next stitch after your chain space gap. And your yarn sometimes will spin around on your hook, that happens. And you can see that it'll grow. So subsequently, you're going to follow the pattern. You do another round exactly like that. Then you're going to do an additional round um, that is has 11 stitches in between. Then you're gonna start decreasing by doing less stitches again. Um, and you'll get something that looks like this. I'm gonna raise the camera a little bit. There we go. Okay, from here we need to create the top edging. And we're also going to do a little bit of decreasing as well. And I wonder if without spilling dirt everywhere, we'll see if this is going to work, if I can show you what I'm working on without, let's see. Okay, so you can see here, that there is an edging at top. The reason that we need that is for two, there's two, twofold, is um, we're gonna decrease a bit, but you also want the strength, that extra sort of reinforcement for holding on to the hanging strands. I'm gonna hang this up again and be back with you. Okay, so from here to do that, we're going to work with single crochets. Oh, I just saw a comment come through, but they're coming through sideways. That's so bizarro. Somebody's asking about a 20% coupon. You know Joanne is always good with that. They have an app and you can check on the phone and when you walk up. Um, I use them on, I think, both the yarn and the Funkins this week, so definitely check it out. Okay, so I'm going to chain one. That is the height of a single crochet. It's not going to count as a stitch. And what I want to do is I want to single crochet in this first stitch, and then I want to single crochet two together over the next two stitches. To do that, I insert in the next stitch, yarn over, pull through one, then I insert in the stitch next to that one, yarn over, pull through one. I'll have three loops on my hook, I'm going to yarn over pull through all three, and see that's melded those two stitches together, so you've just decreased. Okay, from here, we're going to just continue just a plain old single crochet until you get to two stitches before the triple crochet from the round below. Okay, so there's one, two, I'm going to, I'm going to decrease again. So single crochet two together. Then 
Then my center stitch will be this, this one that was the triple crochet, so I'm just going to plain old single crochet into that one. Maybe, if this mohair will do me right. There we go. And then I'm going to single crochet two together, the next two together, so that they're mirrored decreases. And voila. And what that does is it slowly cinches it in just a wee bit together just to give you some nice shape. All right, from there you're going to be you're going to be pretty much done. At the at the top, you will then just rejoin the yarn. You'll fasten off there. You'll rejoin the yarn. And you can see you just create long chains every other chain space. So you can see that I've Sorry about that. You can see that I've added, um, I've joined the yarn in the chain space area to give it a little more of a webby look because it pulls it. I've also, well, I'm, I'm jumping the gun a little bit. All right, so now I'm gonna talk, let's talk tassel. But for that, I'm going to flip the camera around yet again. So let me set my plant down for a second. Okay, and we're back. All right, so now we want a big old long tassels. Tassels are, clearly I love me the tassels. Uh, tassels are really fun and easy to make. There's a lot of different ways you can make them. Um, Joanne carries multiple kinds of um, tassel makers if you wanna use one. I know Boy makes one. This one is by Clover and um, I chose this because it could go as big as I wanted it to be. I have, oh my gosh, I don't know, it might be a 10 inch tassel, really big. You could also use a book, but I like this because it's really handy. So to do that, you're just going to wrap around and then you're going to take some additional yarn and some scissors. Maybe take a tapestry needle if you want, but you can feed it through put it in my mouth because you know that's how we crafters do you're going to tie at the top and this you want to make sure that you have a long enough piece because this is going to be the piece that you use to actually sew the tassel on so you'll tie that tight You'll slide it off, allegedly, or you can just go ahead and cut it. There's a nice little ridge here, so you can just slide your scissors right in. It's like magic. And then you have kind of a ghosty looking piece, so you can make little ghosts with your kids too. You just wanna take another strand. You can either take a strand that's already there or a separate strand. wrap it around, tie it, and then you'll just feed it through the bottom and sew it on. Super, super easy. Okay, the last thing that we should talk about really quickly is how to make this funkin into a planter. It's super easy. All you need to do is take a craft knife and just a pencil and draw around, make sure that you draw around whatever size that the, whatever plastic pot or, or whatever's holding your plant is. And then you're gonna cut it. And when you cut the top off, it'll look like this. You just ditch it, place your plant in. You can get a faux plant. They've got tons of them in the floral aisle at Joann's. If you do that, I would also get a floral or a styrofoam or a florifoam square to stick underneath there. You can stuff it with um, tissue paper, anything to get it to the height. If it's a real plant like I've used, you should probably just put it in, keep it in a plastic pot that's also on top of a floral film. You just stick it in there, make it extra little Halloween-y by hot gluing a little spider or anything else that inspires you onto it, and you hang it and you're good to go. So this is a really fun web-inspired planter. You could do this, save this for Thanksgiving, ditch this, put an acorn, go with the orange pumpkin. You could switch them out for really any holiday super fun and easy and an unexpected decoration for Halloween. So I hope you enjoyed our first little foray into yarn play. Please come back here to the Joanne Facebook page on October 11th when I will be back. Um, if you'd like in the comment section, 
Let me know what kind of yarny project you're interested in. You never know, we just might pick it. Probably also be Halloween related because we love it so much. And don't forget to go over to YouTube and subscribe to the Knit Show with Vicki Howell YouTube page. We go live the entire series for binge watching pleasure. It goes live on October 5th. So yeah, you won't want to miss out. And you can also check out thenitshow.com for more information. Thank you so much. Um, take a little time to be yarn crafty. All right. Take care. Bye.